spell it with a capital N, Negro with a small n, Negro with a capital N. Some of us, sometimes he just call us straight up nigger. Huh? We were colored. Some of us still colored. Some of us still taking care of colored folks' business. Huh? Some of us still act colored. And we don't know how to deal with a black woman or a black man when a black man or a black woman stands up in the midst of colored people, they try to eat him alive. Try to eat her alive. Because they know that if it's black in the midst of that which is colored, it ain't gonna be long before that black is gonna dominate the colored and the colored is gonna become black. I said that because I see Brother Anthony Essex on the front row here, former president of the Los Angeles chapter of the NAACP, who the white man, the goddamn white man, who has kept him on in the newspapers the past, past few weeks, kept him in the news, talking about how when he, what his reign or his period of administration was like over the NAACP. Now they're trying to hook him up because he was a brilliant mind in the savings and loan industry. Trying to say that there was some impropriety on his part. But he's the same black man who stood up with Minister Farrakhan and introduced him once. Right here in this city. And when he did that, the colored organization that he was with went crazy on him. And Uncle Tom Bradley and the others went crazy on him. But we're happy to have you here with us, brother. We're all striving to be black here. And we love you here. And we should back him up 100% every way that we can back him up. Can we back him up? We fight you with him against who? Against who? Against who? with your brother against that goddamn white man. Here he is, right here. You come on here and be the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Black People. Yeah. <laughs> L.A. chapter. Don't we need an L.A. chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Black People? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wouldn't you be a card-carrying member of the National Association for the Advancement of Black People? Yeah. Lifetime membership, huh? Yeah. Can't get out, can you? Yeah. Oh, praise the shit y'all love. This is the place. This is the place. We anticipate just a few more weeks, maybe a month or two more, we have to get out of here. We won't be able to meet it anymore. We're all out in the hall, all in the kitchen. We're everywhere. This place is too small. We need a place back on the Crenshaw Street. But you want to go back to Crenshaw? It's the main business artery that runs through the black community. Huh? It's, it's our Broadway. Is that right? Well, hell, you better hurry up because the Koreans is eating it up like Pac-Man. <laughs> I mean, they eating it up putting them funny symbols up there, boy. You don't know what the hell they saying? <laughs> you can't read the menu, you can't read the suit, shoe si sizes or nothing. Messing over us in the swap meets and everywhere. Are we gonna be everybody's nigga? The white man's nigga. The Chinese's nigga. The Japanese's nigga. Fuck the Vietnamese over in Vietnam. They hadn't done nothing to us. Fighting them for the white man, American white man. The British white man had jumped on them. The French white man had jumped on them. They kicked the French white man behind. They kicked the British white man behind. Then we went over there with them and they kicked the American white man behind. We lose it our life for the white man. Malcolm used to say, here lies a black man while, uh, who got killed or died while fighting for a white man against a yellow man. I mean, it's silly. But even the Vietnamese came over here and got ahead of us. Started opening up stuff everywhere. Now the Koreans and everybody. That's the only question I have in Brother Spike Lee's movie. I love that brother. 
and do the right thing was powerful. But I'm wondering why he gave the Koreans such a break in the movie. Remember he had that line in there where he said, leave the Korean alone. He's all right. Well, how in the hell is the Korean all right? What makes him all right? Huh? Then he showed the Korean running behind the police car, beating on the police car like he's really empathizing with us. That's the only thing I got a question, Brother Spike, of. Everything else was A-OK -okay and absolutely all right. He was on it. He was doing the right thing. But to give the Koreans that much credit, I don't know what that purpose was. Now, God, there's so much. Finishing this up. I was finishing up on Jesse with, with, um, with uh, George Wallace. Can you imagine a meeting with George Wallace but won't meet with Minister Farrakhan? He met with George Wallace in the public. He won't meet with Minister Farrakhan in private. Can you imagine Tom Bradley meeting with the South African representative giving him the key to the city in public but won't meet with Minister Farrakhan in private? What kind of Negroes are these? And these are your representatives? And you run around praising them? Run, Jesse, run. That's what he ought to be doing, as I said, running for the border, running out, run out of town by sundown. We're talking here today, of, for those who are just coming in, about the goddamn white man. That one that God has condemned, that his world is to come down, and that he is now to raise up his people. And the way he will raise up his people, the black people, is that he will give them a guide, give them a warning. Give them a messenger. Give them a freedom fighter. Give them a revolutionary who is divinely guided, who is from God himself, who God has his hand on that man. Set that man in the midst of the people. And that man becomes a fountain of wisdom in the midst of the people. When I mentioned Brother David Howard, he understands what Almighty God is doing with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan in our midst because as I was saying earlier when we saw on TV that he who had never been among us before never been to a meeting we didn't even know him but when we saw that he worked for the telephone company and he's up on the pole working for the company telephone company and the Klan came by and shot him in the back and paralyzed him from the waist down he's in the wheelchair back there now but he's a strong black man when we saw that, it was just like it was one of us that we knew every day. We rounded up all of the men on short notice, didn't we? We had a caravan almost as long as the Nile River, looking for us some, some Ku Klux Klan. We just had a taste for Klan that day, not Klan. We had a taste for Klan that day. And we went looking for the Klan. And we ultimately found the Klan. Some of it can be talked about, some of it can't be talked about. Some of it has been told, and other parts of it ain't gonna never be told. And those who know won't say, and those who say probably won't know what they're talking about. But on national television, we met the Ku Klux Klan. Over him, he's in the courtroom, and we went to put protection on him and the NAACP president out in that area, uh, Reverend Dunstan. And brother was with the precinct reporter newspaper then, uh, Minister Rubin here. And we went out, nose to nose with the Klan, pumped them out absolutely. I can't even tell you the kind of machinery we had hooked up for. I can't even tell you the stuff that we had waiting in the wings and the stuff we had everywhere waiting for the Klan. But they could tell what we had. I couldn't even believe they were the Ku Klux Klan. You know, you have all these images of the Klan. They were big, burly, pot-bellied, beer-bellied peckerwoods. That tall. I thought when we showed up, we were going to have to start rumbling right then. We had a contingent of men in vans and trucks and jeeps. They had one command, and that was to watch the flow of the crowd feel the spirit of things. And if anything broke out with AK-47s and Uzis and automatic weapons or whatever the Klan broke out with, or if the police got in it 